Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create a chart like this that shows a gap or, or the range between a high and a low value and to show you what that difference is. So here we can see, you know, this blue value at the top the orange value at the bottom and the gap between. So you can quickly see where there's a large gap and where there are maybe smaller ones. So delete this and start from scratch. So for this data, what I'm using is Berkshire Hathaway's um, annual returns over the past you know, 50 or so years and comparing it against the S&P's returns. And to show what those gaps are, how how better Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has done compared to the overall market. And so we've got their returns as percentages here and the S&P's 500's returns here. Now, now to make this work, what I'm gonna need to do is add, add a couple of extra columns just to plot this out because there's not a default chart in Excel that's gonna make this look exactly how I want it to look. So the three columns I'm gonna need need to add are a starting value, a crossover amount in case it goes from a negative to a positive, and also a, a difference. And so I'm gonna need to create formulas to calculate all these totals and so that it's it's properly plotting them on, on my chart. So for the starting value, this is where I basically want to start at the bottom if it's a positive number and I want to start at the maximum if it's a negative number and needs to drop down. So I'm going to do is start with an if statement and say okay if the maximum of these values is less than zero, if, uh, if the maximum of these values is less than zero and they're negative, then I'm going to take the maximum of those of those ranges otherwise I'm gonna take the smallest number so that's my starting value that I'm gonna work with and I can copy this all the way down the next figure I'm gonna get is the crossover amount and this is only going to be used if I go if I swing from a negative value to a positive so for instance one returns in the negative ones in the positive so this is the trickiest calculation to do here and so what I want to do is test an if statement to say okay if this times this is less than zero is less than zero. So add another bracket here. Less than zero, which means if I multiply these numbers together, they come out with a negative, and that tells me that there's a crossover. Right? If they're both the same, they're both positive, they're both negatives, then multiplying them it is going to result in a positive number. But if it's if they're different, then it's going to be a negative. So this is why that that test is just checking to, to see if it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, that means it's negative and the symbols are, are different, a positive and a negative somewhere. So if that's the case, then I wanna take the minimum value of these amounts because if we assume this was a negative 10 and it went up to a 49.5 positive, then that crossover amount is uh, gonna be 10 because I need to get back from a negative 10 back up to zero and then add on that 49.5. So that's where I need to take that lowest value. And if it's not, um, if there aren't diff differing symbols, then I can just set this crossover amount to zero because I don't need to calculate anything for it. So I'm gonna copy this down. And you can see for some of them, I do have this crossover amount from minus 8.4 to a positive 19.4. But for everything else, you know, where there isn't a crossover, I can just leave this as zero. Next up is the difference calculation. So in this case, I'm gonna add on that crossover amount to my calculation because again, I need to, if it's crossing over at all, I also need to factor in the remaining difference on top of that. So here again, I'm gonna check if it is a negative value, if there's a negative value here. So if there's a negative value, less than zero then what I'm gonna do is take the minimum of those values because I need to know how far down I need to go into the negative and then I'm gonna subtract my my starting value because I, I essentially want to get that difference between okay this is where I started from and this is how low I need to go and if it's not negative then what I need to do is take the maximum of this range 
and then subtract that starting value as well. So now if I close this out, now I've got my calculations all filled in here. Next up, what I'm gonna do is actually plot these on a chart now. So I'm gonna to go to insert, select chart, and I'm gonna use a combo chart here because I need multiple things on here. I can't just group them as all clustered columns. So the, the returns, I'm gonna use lines with markers. And everything else, what I'm gonna do is set them as stacked columns. Okay, and that's gonna stack because I want those differences stacking onto each other. So the line with markers for the returns and the starting value, the crossover, the difference, those are gonna be stacked. Okay, so I'm expand my chart out here. Now this still has a lot of a lot of work to do before it starts to be what I want it to look like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is for these ones that have the have the returns, I'm just interested in the data points so i got to form a data series i can remove the line right now it looks a bit cleaner i'll do the same thing for this orange one because again i don't want that line to show up i i'm just interested in those data points now you can see it's st slowly starting to come together i still need to make some adjustments to these to these colors here and so the next step i'm going to do is now modify some of these um column column colors. So for example, this, I want to select the entire range of any one that, any of these starting values. So what I'm going to do is click on the starting values and select under the fill option, select no fill. So that disappears. What I also want to do is make the difference and the crossover amounts the same, just so it looks like one solid amount. So I'm going to use a, let's say a gray color for the crossover the same thing for the difference now this still doesn't look quite correct because i i need to change the the hierarchy so i'm going to select the data and the crossover amount needs to be above the starting value and now you can see once i do that now the now the formatting rules and the the stacking changes and that uh, that enables me now to show those values correctly and so now you can see we've got those those ranges showing properly the only thing I may want to change here is formatting this this axis so that the that the labels are set as at low not to not to interfere with the, the chart and so now you can see now we've got that effect that I was showing you at the beginning where we've got the um, the S&P returns in orange the Berkshire retor returns in blue, and then the gray gap in between. So you can quickly spot that, you know, in this year, for example, you know, Berkshire Hathaway did a whole lot better, 129% versus the S&P's 23%. And, you know, you can identify areas where there wasn't a huge gap. Like right here, there's almost nothing. They, they were almost identical. In this case, it looks like they were. And so it's easy for this for this chart to allow you to, to spot any sort of variances like that so the benefit of, of using this is you know it can identify any sort of pattern like we see you know back in the 70s and 80s the, the variances were fairly high whereas recently they've they've narrowed down a little bit and so a chart like this can can help you identify trends like that so i'll leave a template um available that you can download if you want to um use an existing one that i've created for you but um this is this is uh, the, the best way that I've found that you know we can we can construct this because right now there's not a built-in template for this in um, in Excel, but I have seen these types of charts growing in in popularity, so I thought I'd go over how to do one from start to finish.